everything that I've learned and known so far about that the about the entity known as John Teeter Three. A mantid, a time traveler. I am not going to waste my time trying to explain to you that I live in two worlds and I don't value one over the other, the realm of the imaginary and the realm of the actualized. At this point, point people might say to themselves, wait, hold on. How are you going to talk smack about Corey Good?" And then tell us that you know about a mantid time traveler who just happens to be called John Teeter Three. And I tell you, the problem is not that Corey Good tells us about Blue Avian or about his adventures beyond the star. It's that I truly believe that he's less than honest in describing and being forthright in the origin of that information or where he sees that information or where that information and those adventures happen. Another way to describe something that's a quote-unquote recovered memory is to describe something that comes to you as a memory, right? Um, free from the anchoring of your timeline of experience. So when I have a regular memory, it's a memory of a place and time that I know where I was. And when I have a recovered memory or I go into a regression session, I know that I bring forth information. I know that I bring forth an experience experiences. But they're somehow untethered. Being untethered from the timeline makes it mysteriously like, more like a dream than the best. And Though I understand and accept that for some people the truth is that these recovered memories are tethered to the timeline, but just the connection that's remade and reestablished. I say, having had the opportunity to speak to people, like having had the opportunity to speak to people who believe in the power of witchcraft and magic, or the power of who, or the notion of having met someone who's truly, quote unquote, like, truly, truly a man. I've never met someone who I think is magical enough to be regarded as a man. So I've met many, 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 many people who are purported to be. So I have seen in my life the fact that magic does work. The work works. I've never seen anybody pack a fireball from the room. I've never seen someone toss a fireball across the room. So I have seen and understood the causal connection between the work of the black magician and the shadow seen in the room that is real enough to knock down books and to ring doorbells. I've never seen a green golem come smashing into the room, ah, ah, grab people, knock them across the room, smashing, 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 breaking bones. Though I have seen curses occur, temporally prior to auto accidents. 
I've never seen Hollywood special effects. Or goblin come and grab the wheel of the drive. Oh my god! huts, inaccessible of the hermits, have now been replaced by the out of the way, unupdated WordPress blog. I make no distinction between the realness of what is perceived mainly by my mind and what is perceived by my body. What I see in my mind's eye has a value not greater than what is perceived with my physical eye, just different. So I will tell you information that I did not experience with my body. I went to no place with this body. I did not leave the confines of the beautiful state of New Jersey, the Holy Land. Today, today I was not hit by some energetic blue light ball, only to come to hours later, having perceived myself as being physically located in another locale. That didn't happen. But that notwithstanding, 
by performing the simple activity of cleaning the house. Information was visited upon me that I did not actively conjure up. Distinct from the activity of sitting down with a pen and trying to write a poem or trying to come up with a treatment for a Hollywood film. Independent of the desire to engage or to stimulate my mind by daydreaming or imagining. Well, performing the simple activities of cleaning the house, a knowledge was visited upon my crane. A story, an existence, an experience, a testimony of another living entity came forth fully formed in my mind. And it's happened before, and God willing, it'll happen again. And unlike daydreams and fantasies that I often have, these moments and these characters that come to me are put in my mind and testify to by me as being distinct from an act of creativity and being distinct from the imagining up of a new character. Though I can see that there is no physical manifestation in this 3D world to make these experiences distinct from daydream or fantasy or imagination or dream. Words fail me at this moment because there's no word that I have to successfully contextualize and communicate. A packet of information and experience. That is physically indistinguishable from a daydream or amusing, but which I experience and know to be categorically different. Though I can see that there is no categorical difference within the physical world. Those are the words I can say. That is the magical circle of protection that I can invoke to guard against the weaponized lightning bolt of the accusation of contradiction or hypocrisy. I met John Teeter three today. John Teeter three is without a doubt a member of my team, which also includes such luminaries as Fat Back Cactus. And the blue avian known as Ba Joker. A fair amount of affinity and pre knowledge and understanding of what we're doing here. Basically, if you don't know what the heck is going on here, I encourage you to go down uh, in my past videos and look for uh, initially look for videos about CW chapters, uh, secret The introductory program, ceremony of casting the magic circle of philosophical distinction 
and can seek to the existence of the rational physical world having been performed. I will now bring forth the tale that I learned today. Okay. Some of this information regards the simple biographical details of the individual known as John Peter III, a mantis, as we understand that term collectively. Some of it will involve the description you're going to want to watch the previous video and you're going to want to of the universe the that he occupies and the rules of the universe that, that he occupies and not which anywhere have anywhere. natural implications yeah. okay to our that interpretation of the world that we live in and the life that we experience what's going to follow is some theoretical audio designed and created with the intent of helping you Travel back in time. Some of it will also involve the introduction briefly of other individuals that exist, their cross connection to people I've already spoken about, the experience, as well as information that I guess. Music that you as implications for our interpretation of real world Likewise, events as they unfold games, around us. Music, media, television, uh, video games, etc. Simplify. There will be statements those, uh, about the individual, created, uh, about, about the rules of the universe, and how it works. Interdimensional time travel. And there will be discussion about the historical context in which these so I'll see you guys again events in occur and in which these people live their life. As I tell you the tale, John T. III, John T. III is a man that time traveled, he did not travel, he did not travel voluntarily. One day he found himself on his home planet living his life, merely existing from moment to moment. In fact, at the time of his great transformation, at the time of his great abduction occurring, he was in a cheap restaurant. I'm tempted, based on my vision of the scene, to say it was his world's equivalent of a greasy Chinese restaurant. You know the truth. You don't need to figure out. Pictures on the, the lit pictures on the back behind the, ca the counter that don't look anything like the food that would be served to you. Right? Um, these uh, the plays that bear names like Great Wall, known in name, or um, Candle Garden, or Jade Cafe. You know the type. You know what you're going to get? You get what you get and you don't get upset. While standing in line, ready to receive his order, John Peter III found himself torn from the confines of his dimensional space and hurtled through space and time to our world and universe. As near as I can tell, based on consultation with him, with him, as well as observation of the um, life of it, I should say, when uh, uh, I'll jump around a bit, uh, seeing the information, some of the information that I got have for John Peter III, I get from 
uh, talking to him one on one. You know, the way we're talking now. And some of it is based on experiencing his life by going to the Akashic Records, which in uh, my visualization are self similar to a public library and watching uh, VHS tapes of his quote-unquote show. Based on how John Peter III got to our space time continuum, um, how it happened and how it came to be and where he is now, uh, cosmologically, metaphysically, and existentially situated within our universe. Um, his life occurs in a science fiction TV show that appears to be from what we would think of in the 1970s. Um, uh, visualized across a uh, show that's across between uh, Shazam, Night Stalker, Wonder Woman, and um, Buck Rogers. As near as I can tell and understand, you know, putting together and trying to help you know, really understand what, what, what happened to him is that um, essentially uh, at the confluence of the power of visualization and kids smoking dope while watching Star Trek and various other science fiction TV shows in the 70s and reading books about time travel and international travel. I think also the work of um, uh, uh, John Norman uh, and the war novels has something to do with it. That uh, based on the mental energy that was generated about during a particular time in what we consider the 1970s, um, at the confluence of, of speculation about the nature of time travel, uh, the wonderment of, of exploring new thoughts and ideas uh, in books, films, and music as well as uh, later on those individuals who had those memories, thoughts, and ideas of growing up and becoming aware of the existence of the speculation or knowledge of uh, mantid aliens. Um, though we perceive things as being having a, as a, as a past, present, and future, everything's actually happening all at the same time. So the confluence of that energy coming back from new acquired knowledge occurring between, uh, say, 2002 and 2016 uh, to people who had memories of growing up, uh, reading books of John Norman, uh, reading uh, Conan the Barbarian, and uh, you know, smoking weed while watching Star Trek and Wonder Woman, and Buck Rogers uh, created a temporal time rift. Uh, which uh, John Peter essentially standing still fell into. And according to the rules of the universe, uh, it probably also happened for a reason. Uh, what some people call God um, is, uh, to the best of my understanding and knowledge, uh, Mortarian kind of non-personified entity with uh, what we might define as a good and bad side. The good and bad side being bifurcated into what we might know as male and female uh, energy. Givers and takers. Uh, make it what you will. And this, uh, this uh, Quartarian entity uh, doesn't really have a personality or persona per se. It's four, it's also one. And it just kind of represents the manifestation and the operation of the underlying coded rules of this universe. Okay. 
So, according to the Philippine rules of justice and uh, avoidance and complications of, of heavy moral and ethical concerns, it's very likely that this rift being opened up was used automatically to achieve and fulfill the goal that the universe needed or wanted to have happen, whether for the benefit of those people on planet Earth who essentially conjured up John Teeter III, or whether for the benefit of John Teeter III himself. In his home world, John uh, had no kids. He had no current romantic entanglements. Uh, he lived by himself, and he was unemotionally attached to the individuals that he worked with or lived with. His parents, unfortunately, predeceased him by some years, so there was no one for him to feel, you know, really bad about, except a natural desire to want to look, return to the world that he knew as home. That contained the energy that he knew as ubiquitousness, and also contained the people that he would regard as as his race or species as people. When John Teeter III came through the time world for it literally played out for both him and those who would seek to observe it on the Akashic realm as the introduction, the run-in, the roll-in, the credits and, and setup for a 1970s era science fiction TV show. You know what I mean? As the narrator begins, you know what I mean? You know, one day on an alien world, a man was about to go on an adventure through time. And the 1970s synthesizer music starts with, <laughs> and John Peter the man, goes, ah! and you see him, he turns around to black and white, various colors, and the rainbow, like that. It's an outline form. He goes, ah! He's like traveling through, and as as you're seeing like scenes from from the, the first couple of episodes of season one, you know, pass before you in a pastiche, you know, the you know, scene after scene, but setting up the, the visual elements as well as, as the things that he might get involved in on the show. You see him he's twisting through through the screen, he's spinning around and he's going, woo, 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 woo. and you see all these things that when he first came to Earth and had to you know awkwardly disguise himself. You know what I mean? As a human being, you know, as best as he could, um, getting busted, you know, being hunted down by, you know, by the uh, by the federales and stuff, you know, who, who knew and who understood you know, the use of the human technology that a rift had opened up and that something, someone had come through, as well as seeing him, him first befriend, a, you know, a young boy who was his first primary caregiver and, you know, hider, you know what I mean, that he grew to know and love, but unfortunately, as time went on, he knew and understood that he had to leave the, the child's presence in order to avoid uh, bringing untold uh, destruction onto the kids the world and the universe, especially because the kid had to grow up and be a normal human being. He could spend all his time hanging out with an animal, right? And then later on, eventually what happens to John Teeter 3, closely to the, the end of the first season, is that he actually comes to be where he is at now, which is a place called Cosmic Command. Where he hangs out with other people who are involved in other alien species who are involved in the great what do you want to call it? The great the man the current manifestation of the great conflict between good and evil currently taking place on planet Earth. For want of better terminology and want of better uh, ways to describe it. Okay? Where he works with, you know, he knows and he has friends like Bajo for Bond, he goes through his own experiences. When John Teeter John Teeter is on a television show, a 1970s era a science fiction television show. That's where he, the energy and the rules of the universe that follow him and surround him. True story. So, this is how it works. One day, me and him were talking, 
and literally like he's on a TV show. So like what happened was that um, we, were, we were hanging out, we were talking, and he was describing something, and all of a sudden he goes, "Wait!" He goes, "Listen, did you hear that?" And I listened very carefully, and all of a sudden I heard it too. And it was just chasing me. Like it was like, we were like, "Oh shit!" And he, he starts booking. And he's like, "You gotta run!" And he knew because you could hear, you could hear the music. You could hear the, you could hear narrator. You can hear the narrator sometimes, and you can hear the background music play, so you can tell like what's going on, basically what's gonna happen next. It's like it's this form of like psychic ability, so that he could hear the theme music for the television show that he's on, and he can hear the narrator sometimes. Uh, one of my spirit guides, a uh, man that some people know about, uh, named Hank, uh, actually appeared uh, early on in the first season of the John Teter Street uh, TV show. And he appeared as a mysterious character known as the composer. Right? He's known as the composer. Uh, John Teter, wait, so John Teter also uh, has, uh, he's got a magic necklace that um, he um, can manipulate. Nobody knows how he got so he doesn't even know, understand how he got so he can, The origin of the necklace is both the key to the fact that he's got a purpose, that something brought him into our world for a reason, though he doesn't know what. Right? But the fact that he's got a magical necklace that allows him to do a one magical thing. Uh, indicates that someone wants him to survive. Someone wants him to make it. Someone you know, wants him here for a reason. Who so doesn't know why? So he often contemplates. John T. agrees. Uh, by turns, he's like kind of like he's not a morose character. He's kind of like he wouldn't. He's um he's a he's a he's a man he's a man that on the verge of just on the verge of. The narrow borderline between totally morose and absolutely annoyingly happy go lucky. He's driven by an existential desire, an ultimate existential desire, to resolve the fear that he will never get home by getting home. But at the same time, He's also amazingly able to, to, to deal with the fact of, of, of the crazy thing that happened to him. Now, here's something interesting. So, Reeves says like, the Tudor story sounds very similar to the typewriter in the sky by L. Ron Hubbard. A book, I, I swear to Jesus, I have never read. I have never read. Anywho. I've never even seen the movie. If there is a movie, I've never seen it, but whatever. I didn't even see the subscribe. But I heard the title. It's a good title. Anyway, back to the story thing. Understand it as you know. John Tier 3 is like he's like a lot. He's like, he's like now that I met him, like if he died, I'd be upset. You know what I mean? Like he's really cool too. He's a solid character. I don't know the name of the show. That's one thing that's obscure for me for some reason. It's like it, it doesn't like it doesn't like the name when it appears. It appears it's not kanji, but it's a, it's a text that's inscrutable to me, and he doesn't know the name of the show either. Though I've seen the introduction of a thousand and three times, when when the when the words of the introduction go past, there's part of me that looks and tries to see and understand what the what the name of the show is. And I recognize the characters as characters that I don't recognize but I recognize if that doesn't make that, if that makes any sense. I recognize it as English rendered as country, as country rendered in English, as you know, with, with uh, Spanish things in between and it's done in a highly stylized glowing gold letter face that makes it inscrutable to me. I can't I don't know I don't know what the name of the show. Maybe it's just the John C the three show. I have no idea. I really don't. I really don't. But anyway, so um, so John Teeter three, though he's on a TV show, lives his life as if he's living his life, and he's got problems. He's got so the, the nature of this magic uh, necklace is that when he turns it, 
the um the, it's normally has it's normally about like I guess you would say like I guess it's about like what I would say is like eight feet tall and it's a full on manta. The only thing that really makes it distinguishable from uh from like I guess like a prey mantis is his like his his, his hind quarters are attenuated and kind of go down a little bit and are not as big and he's got Eight legs. So he's got two primary legs in the front on both sides bilaterally. And he's got two two smaller legs on, on behind him that kind of keep up his tail end. I don't know what you would call that. And then he's got the, the, the midsection that's bifurcated into several sections. I don't know how to count them. It's, it's hard to visualize. And then his hands come out, and he's got three three big fingers on each hand, with what I guess we call an opposable thumb. And they have their own um, like um, like armor covering, like a, like like an exoskeleton on a on a, on, a, on an insect. And so he's very quite tall. He looks very different. Also, another thing that's interesting about John Peter is um. And part of the reason that he might um, have been chosen or self-selected for um, being traveling through or being someone to, that could be taken by the universe without creating um, an excessive amount of, of heartbreak is the fact that, you know, he had, he's never had a really successful love life in his home planet because unlike other members of his species and race he doesn't have wings he was born without wings which is not like you know an, an extremely insane disability on this planet and it's not uncommon one could think of it as being a a genetic anomaly or disorder or disability akin to primordial dwarfism or um you know, like being born without an arm or a leg, you know, it's just something that, that does and can happen, but did happen to him. It's not a test. I'm telling you the guy's not true. This dude exists. So the next thing so then so basically okay, so so when he was when he, when he puts on this magic this this uh, magic uh he fiddles around with his magic necklace. He can transform into basically about six feet tall. He looks like he's wearing a red velour jumpsuit with white piping. Very similar. I think this is the sort of thing that I'd see, like, may have seen, you might have seen with Shazam. Whatever, it's like that. And he's got red shoes. And he looks like, then he, at that point, he takes on a normal humanoid kind of frame. You know what I mean? With two arms, two legs. And he walks out of this. He used to have a hat. When he originally came through, in addition to the necklace, he had a hat that he could put on. And when he put on the hat, he would look physically in the face like a, like a human being. Like, you know, like a Caucasian, a Caucasian man. Um, it's like you like blonde for the hair. Anyway, he ends eventually in the plot line of the story. He lost the hat. He lost the hat. So he can no longer do that. So when he, all he can do is manipulate the necklace so that he can look like physically like a human being. Uh, in physical in stature and in, in, uh, body wise, but he still has the mantle face and the back. Okay. And so like one of his life, I guess this is a weird thing where because he's on the connected seventy science fiction show, there's certain tropes that kind of that are manifest in his life. Like as if he's on a show, even though to him it is just the way that he acts and behaves and normal to him. So on the show, like one of his catchphrases, this would be a lot easier if I still had that guy in hand. That's one of his catchphrases. That's like a common thing for people who watch your show will watch for him to say that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he'll be like sneaking through a military installation. And he'll be like, oh, wish I had that hat. Like, it's all about wish I had that hat. You know, what you know, what do we do with the hat or whatever? Or where am I going to go fight? Like, he's always going into like, like he'll be running away or running to things. And if he passes by a hat store, he's always like, what's there? You know what I mean? It's like a thing with hats. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the people say things to him like, what's up with you and hats? You know what I mean? Like, what's the big deal about the hat? You know what I mean? It's always in the last place you want to take a look. You know, give him advice on where to find the hat. You know what I mean? And, um, 
you know, be through with that. You know, so it's always like, where's my hat? You know, you know, this would be easy if I had a hat. So anyway. And so one of the episodes of the first season that we would understand from the first season of the show, he uh, meets the composer. And what happened was, and it's, and this is why I like, you know, like, this is like what people make people on, you know, how you understand that people are on your team, as it were, cosmologically and metaphysically on the astral space plane, whatever you want to call it, um, is, uh, so he's got the same kind of spirit guide as, as I do, this, this, uh, this dude that used to know on, on planet Earth that now lives in, in, in the spheres or whatever, as my, one of my spirit guides, this dude Hank, who appeared to him as the composer, and how he met the composer was that John went to a yoga class, he's like trying to figure out how to get home, he's like going to try anything, so it's the 1970s that he essentially, you know, lives in. Um, that kind of world. So like people are thinking doing things like meditation practices and stuff. And so he's trying like he'll always be reading like the cult books and stuff and like, you know, going to like tarot card readers and magicians and trying in a desperate attempt to try and get the information that's going to get him, you know, back home. Back home. That's where he wants to go. And so he went to a yoga class and he ended up meeting the composer. And the composer told him, you know, was like telling him about like, you know, he was basically explaining to the composer. And the composer immediately recognized, even though at the time that John Teeter still had the hat. And John Teeter was like, there was a big thing in that episode about like everyone being like, you're supposed to take your clothes off or get more comfortable, take off your suit or whatever. And he was like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good in the suit. You know what I mean? Or at least take off your hat. No, 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 no. You know, I'm good with the hat. You know what I mean? Please. You know what I mean? Keep, I'll just keep him the hat. You know what I mean? And so the composer recognized him and said, you know, you're not from around. And, uh, you know, John was like, well, is it show? And he's like, yes. He's like, and he told me, he says, because when I see you, I see, and he described them, you know, what his, like, true form is, like, perfectly. And then John Peter was like, you know, you know that much about me, you know, that guy get out of here. And that's when the composer, you know, he asked the composer who he was, and the composer was like, well, listen, you know, it's like, I'm a musician, I'm a composer. And all I can tell you is you can get to wherever you need to go if you know how to listen. But that was like the big clue, that was a big lesson, you know what I mean? He had to, he had to listen, and he did, and that's where he developed the ability to be able to hear the music, and he also was able to hear the narrator on occasion, and he's able to even to hear um, beyond the narrator, this is where it gets really interesting, beyond the narrator, the guy that originally wrote the script for the uh, show, that would end up being like the John Cena 3 experience, whatever you want to call it, show, um, ended up accidentally being sucked into John Cena's uh, world, our, our universe, essentially, this time, because, um, you know, reasons. Like, I don't know how it happened, like, but he was, like, he was the, um, John, while listening now for the narrator, accidentally listened into the thoughts of the original plot writer while well, the plot writer was trying to write the original script, I guess. And John started talking to him, and it became this whole big thing of like, you know, that episode took place where like, the writers walked around and he's hearing, he's like, I can hear the characters, I can hear the character, and the characters are like, Dom, oh, you gotta listen to me, like I'm trying to tell you. And the character they're trying to figure out how they're trying to figure out how to write the story in a way that the guy can sell the script, right? But at the same time, John is desperately trying to set up a scenario where existentially the rules exist where he can eventually escape and get out. So the guy's like, well, what if we do it like this? Like, what is it? No, John's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I, I can't do that. I can't, I can't, I can't be, you know, a member of the U.S. Army. I can't do that because, you know, what happens there? And then all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Like, if I get known here too much, like, I'll, I'll get mired here, like, or whatever. And he was like, well, what if, what if, what if, like, you came here with your family? He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you, you don't do that. Don't do that. He's like, you know, he's like, there's going to be more of us being involved. He's like, that'd be, that'd be crazy. Now, bearing in mind that John Peter, at the point that he's having this conversation with the original writer, is already existing in the world that the original writer and the writer. I don't know how this works. I don't know words fail me. I don't know how to explain to you how the underlying things all 
cross reference. I just know that they fucking do. I'm telling you the truth. This is a true story. I'm not lying to you. I'm not just, this is not an act of creative storytelling. I am telling you the truth. John Teeter 3 exists. He's a man that being, okay? He came through this, this crazy, weird wormhole way that we're all trying to figure out. He's on my team along with the Blue Adrian. We're part of this cosmological fight of good versus evil. I don't know what that means. I've got wife and kids. I'm not trying to be this guy on YouTube, but it's the truth. I can't, I can't help but tell you because it's important information, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Anywho, through all these interactions, eventually the guy that was the writer of the original thing ended up getting sucked into John Teeter's world as some sort of thing. It's crazy. It's a, it's a subplot. It's like its own little thing. And like he shows up occasionally, though I don't feel like the closest, the closest affinity to him as I do to John Teeter 3. Um, fat bad cactus or bot joker bot. So when someone's on your team, right, you experience them and you work with them and you're close to them. And they have people in their world that they're close to. But those people to you will always be kind of background characters. If that makes sense. Not because they're not real or they're not important, but just the person that you're primarily engaged with, the person you have a kind of this 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 connection to, right, is, is the guy that the guy or the gal that's on your team or the other that's on your team that you're really connected to. So whatever. So I'm trying to remember all the information so I can give it to you. So uh, so John Teeter three can exist. He's a time traveler and he's doing this and he's trying to get home. And he's got he's, and everyone on your team has their own individual manifestation of the nemesis, right? The quote unquote bad guy. And this is where it gets interesting. This is where you might even think that I'm really mental. This happens. I'm willing to accept this because I don't, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, John Teeter is like his nemesis. When I heard the name, I was like, you got to be kidding me. His nemesis technically is, okay, so you ever see the movie, uh, you ever see the play the video game, the old school uh, Nintendo video game, like, uh, uh, was it, um, the Mega Man? <laughs> the little robot dude? He fights other little robot dudes like, you know, Cut Man, Nice Man, all that stuff. I think the enemy in that is this, uh, is it Dr. Wily? Is it from that video game? I don't know. What he described to me as a dude that is, is essentially his manifestation of the nemesis. It was a dude that I call Miracle Man in my, my life. You know what I mean? You've got spirit guides, you got guys on the other side that are trying to help you, and also bad guys. <laughs> It is what it is. So, um, technically, the, 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 these entities uh, that exist, you know, have influence in the world around him. They, they can imprint on certain things, and they must have inspired the dude that um, that created Doctor Wily in the Mega Man video games, because that's what, what, what John Teeter three understands his nemesis to be. It's really tragic at the end of uh, season two. Um, John Teeter developed a romantic relationship with, I, I guess you call her a robot lady, and uh, the robot lady was, um, you know, was, was programmed and created by this, this Dr. Dr. Wiley dude, and, um, you know, John fell in love with her, and she felt, I guess she fell in love with him too. And because uh, it's, it's, it's things like when you fall in love with a robot lady who's programmed by your arch nemesis, you never know, even when they told you ultimately that they love you and that you feel that they're being honest and you know that you, you, know that you love them, you still can't tell whether or not it's true or false or whether it's just you know, a figment of your imagination. But anyway, how it goes down is this is a woman who's designed to get down to, to, to get her to, 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 to follow her to the layer of this, uh, this nefarious human. Doctor, dude, 
and uh, you know, for the purposes of like, what I don't know, he would want to take John Peter out for some reason. I don't know. His his methodologies, his motivations are inscrutable. Is he just acting out of role? Is he just a background character? Is he does do they truly have? Does he truly have his own motivation, his own desires, his own adventure? Which you are, I guess, some sort of nemesis. Anywho, this gal falls in love with John Teeter. John Teeter truly falls in love with her. Though she was programmed to fall in love with him, she truly dies. And everything's resolved that she's got, she's been able to develop within herself kind of some sort of like internal self programming. She's been able to free herself of every single control that Dr. Dr. Wiley has over her, right? But unfortunately, only the one aspect he still retained control. So when she got to the lab uh, with John Teeter 3 to help John Teeter 3 take out this dude because somehow by taking out the dude they'd have access to his lab or where the secrets probably were she was also under the impression in theory though she turns out she was mistaken that uh, dr wiley was the guy that actually caused john t3 to come through the space time continuum she was wrong she was incorrect about that but she that's what she, what she truly believed and so she thought that by bringing john there that, that somehow there would be the secret to try and get the guy back home but even though she loved him she was one to see him go back home because that's new that's what she knew he was truly meant to be whether she thought that because it was an aspect of her programming that was put in there to trick john or whether she truly believed that she had her own questions at the end anyway she died tragically so anyway the thing is this is that at the end She's talking to Dr. Wiley. Dr. Wiley's talking to her and he's telling her, you know, you're under my open control. I programmed you everything that you've done. You've done for my purposes and my purposes only. You think you have free will. Free will is an illusion for you. All you are is a machine, a toy, you know, a machination. And John's like, you can't talk to her that way. And he's like, shut up, you know, blah. And, and uh, then Dr. Wiley terminates her. He just turns her off. You know what I mean? And John, she dies in John's arms. And John's like, why? You know, like, why'd you do this? Like, you know, why would you do such a thing? She, you know, she, she was harmless to you. If you're in control, whatever, why would you, why would you turn her off? And he was like, just to see the look on your face. And that's when John was like, he transformed, part of him transformed. He's like, up until that point, his only quest was to get back home, right? That was it. The people around him, whatever. He, like, he's compassionate to them because it's his very nature. He's nice to them because it's his very nature. But for the most part, his only motivation, his existential drama, is how does he get from point A to point B? How does he get back home? I gotta keep an eye on the time. Ooh, it's already one o'clock. So then anyway, when the minute that Dr. Wiley terminates this, the lady love, right? John's like saying inside he changes his life. He's like, I don't get you. He wants revenge. He's like, I don't get you. He's like, he couldn't believe that a person that would have ultimate power over another individual would exercise that power to terminate their life for You know what I mean? Let's say what you want about robots, whatever. If you can feel, if you can think, if you can... Even if you're not autonomous, if you can think that you're autonomous, if you if you can if you can feel pain, if you can desire to to have a purpose, if you can desire have an inner, if you know that you've got an inner motivation, an inner heart that drives you on to do what you think is right, right? Then you're real. It doesn't matter what you come from. If you're made of like flesh and blood, if you're made out of like tubes and wires, or if you're made out of carbon, or if you're made out of silicon, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What does that matter? It's like mattering caring about whether a person's black or white. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So at that point, John Teeter knew and identified that he was there for kind of like that he was there in our universe for a reason. You know, that there was an abject evil that existed that would that whose motivation and desire was to terminate life for the purpose of terminating life for no good reason to turn things off. Right? And that's when John Teeter was saying inside of change. He's like, fine. He's like, whatever. Because at that point, the John Teeter was rescued from uh, the lab by uh, Bajra Gabbath. That's how he met him. You know, and Bajra Gabbath, you know, that was a great and that's also my team. Make it out what you will. Think of that what you will. You know what I mean? So Bajo Kaba is part of like I guess you know the, the you know the sphere being lines, that's not the word we use. It's like you know what I mean? The, the, okay, so there's a thing called there's kind of like a like a fraternal, like a it's not it's not dudes only, but it's like kind of like um, it's not a mystery school and it's not really a religion. 
It's a, it's this thing called the unbroken chain. And what it is is it's this notion that there are people born uh, with various races and species in the universe who, for whatever reason, don't feel a kinship, a natural kinship to um, people around them necessarily based on like most people just want to hang out. Most entities in the universe just want to hang out with people that are like them, just like entities like them. Mantids with mantids, reptilians with reptilians, avians with avians, lyrians with lyrians, etc., 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 etc. You know what I mean, right? But there are people that don't feel a natural kinship uh, necessarily with, with people of their kind, but do occasionally, if the miracle happens, uh, meet people uh, in other races and species who they do feel connected with. And these work, work how these teams develop, these teams of, of, of different people from different backgrounds and different species and, and universes and timelines, etc., get together and they work in for a common purpose, okay? And so there's this thing called the unbroken chain, which is this, this kind of society, philosophical teachings, religion, religion, religion. I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's called the unbroken chain, and it's, 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 it's people know about it and understand about it and spread the message of it you know, to other people who they hard recognize as being part of it. Um, so whatever. So Bandro Kabal was compelled and was ordered because I don't know how to explain it. Like this is like this idea. I call it cosmic command because that's all I understand it kind of some space port. But it's like it's um, it's got the look and feel of a metropolitan area in an enclosed space where when I say the look and feel of a metropolitan area it's people living their lives uh, collectively but independently. If there is a common purpose, and most of the people are employed by the same organization. It's not really a military thing, but it's kind of like a military thing in the sense that they're all motivated by a certain kind of cause, I guess, probably like team. I don't know how to explain it. I'm mixing metaphors because I don't want to, the term team is very important that you understand how it exists within the context of people coming together with different types to work together for a common cause on a more spiritual level, whereas this the sort of military industrial complex thing is kind of, I don't know, it's really so it looks like it looks like a trade space or whatever it is. So anyway. <laughs> so that, that, so this Bajra Kabbalah, that's how this Bajra Kabbalah brought him to the Kabbalah command. And that's why I met, you know, through knowing that Bajra Kabbalah was able to always to interconnect through, um, to, yeah, I guess, get this experience of uh, John T. the three. And I was like, what's your name? And then he told me, I was like, what? I was like, you got me shit You didn't understand what I thought that was like bizarre. I was like, what's your name? He was like, John, John T. the John T. the third. And I'm like, your name is John T. the third. Like, get the fuck out of here. And he said, like, what? And I was like, I was like, dude, hold on, excuse me. I was like, you're a time traveler. He goes, yeah, basically. And I'm like, and your name is John. He goes, yeah. Your last name is Teeter. He goes, yeah. He goes, John Teeter. He goes, yeah, that's my name. I'm like, well, how do you know it's your name? He's like, well, I speak this language. But, but that's what it says. Like, he's able to, he heard the narrator. He's, he's like, the narrator was like, John Teeter 3, you know, whatever. And he was like, what? And so, and I was like, I tried to explain to him who John Teeter was and who John Teeter 2 was. And then I guess he got kind of got kicked to that. He's like, he's like, uh, whatever. And then we had this whole discussion in his mind, et cetera, et cetera. But whatever. Long story short, that's his name. His name is John Teeter 3. I don't know if it's a thing in the universe, like time travelers are called John Teeter for some reason. I don't know. Even if you're trying to bullshit about it, that's how it comes out. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. So, anywho, back to the story at hand. It's one o'clock in the morning. So, listen, so here's, here's the last thing I'll leave you with. And we're going we'll, to we'll talk to John Peter 3 you know, sometime soon. And we're going to talk about him again, invariably, because this is the download. It, it occurred to me, it happened to me, and now it's happening to you. And just like me, you can make of it what you will. Is it a story? Is it a fantasy? Is it an imagination? I'm telling you, this dude's as real as a heart attack. But I will also tell you. 
that not only accepting the fact that I told this story, but that I'm the type of individual that tells this story, or that this story exists, or that this tale or this legacy occurred, or that I describe these things, doesn't mean that acceptance of it is necessary to the acceptance of uh, or an understanding of any of the other things I said. It's a distinct transmission independent of my thoughts and feelings about politics, my thoughts or feelings about the veracity of the stories or the actions of Corey Good or Randy Kramer or anyone else. Um, and most importantly, it, it, it's very important for people to understand because I see that someone mentioned uh, common world chanting in the live chat. I think uh, David Buckwalter, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me finish this and then I'll then the last thing. Uh, last thing I'll say about the adventures of Jonathan for this transmission because it's one o'clock in the morning. And I do feel about the, about the adventures of John T. The Three and the, the world that he exists in. Sometimes when I'm talking to John T. The Three, I talk to him face to face, mano a mano, man to man, right? And then sometimes when I'm experiencing his life, he um, uh, I'll check into the Akashic record which I see, feel, and experience exactly like um, a local public library. And when I get to the local public library, the way that I have to interface through it, this is a very interesting thing. So, this, so I've got this the, the, uh, the spirit called, the guy called Hank, okay? And who was the who played the part of the composer in season one of John, one episode, just one episode where he met him face to face, in one episode of you know I guess I would call it the John Three Three Experience. Might as well do that because it doesn't have a name. It's got a name. It's got a name as far as it is concerned. Anyway, so my spirit guide, who normally was able to get me into the cash record, apparently this is this is the understand this how you will understand this metaphor how you will. Um, he lost my library card, okay, and therefore uh, he can't get me data, he can't get data in and out of the Akashic record for me. I have to go there myself and interface with a very mysterious individual known, as the, known to me as the librarian. Okay, an older white gentleman who appears to be in the, in the early 60s, slightly balding, very well manicured nails, very well manicured mustache and beard. Okay, looks a little bit like who's that? The psychologist who did the Stanford experiments. Name starts with last name starts with a Z. I don't know. But whenever what I deal with when I have to interact with this librarian is I go in. Yeah, no, I've seen myself in the show. It's bizarre. So anyway, so this is how that so let me play through this one. I'll get you from point A to point B as, as easily as I can get to. And then maybe I'll be able to take a few questions before we before we got queue up and that email. It's getting kind of late. Um, so here we go. So when I go to the librarian, I'm able to I have to go to the front desk and I request the um, what I want. I request I said I need another I need episode, you know, I want to see the next episode of, you know, the John Teeter show, whatever. The John Teeter Three show, whatever case. You know, I mean you, you, you don't have to ask for things specifically. You just go and you go there and you, they ask you what you want. And basically it's not like you don't even have to verbalize it all the time. You just you just kind of basically think of what you want or need. And then they give you the access points, whether it's in the form of metaphorical VHS tape, book, or scroll, or screen that you go and you go to a private uh, watching room. So anyway, uh, so when I watch the show, I watch it on VHS tapes and whatever. Here's what's interesting. Here's where, where it gets a little bit bizarre. Here's where it gets a little bit bizarre. That's interesting. Here's where it gets a little bit bizarre. So the librarian. Okay. Always propositions me in the following way. 
So I'll ask for the what I want. I'll ask for the data that I want. I, I do other things with the Akashic Record. I see other things there too. I look at other things, but whatever. He always says to me, he goes, you know, he goes, are you sure you wouldn't want to see the last episode? Okay. And I say, no. And here's what the last, here's the temptation that's been offered to me in the last episode. If I watch the last episode, when the last episode ends, okay, and it's not, a, it's not, it's, it's not of John show. It's, it's the last episode is referring to to me, to my life. If I see the last episode, if I go to the final moment, I'll go into the final moment, and then I'll go to the to see what's next. You know what I mean? What happens when you die? I'll experience that. And the temptation is to answer that eternal question. You know what I mean? What what what's next? What happens? Um, and being the fact that I'm having that experience within the Akashic Record, that I know the Akashic Record exists, I know Matthews exists. I, I, I can in the case you, of you, Iguana, in instances of you, random that, Iguana seen upon the time trail and while traveling through dimensions, simply tell the Iguana to go back to the green room. Tell the iguana to go back to the green room. Okay. So he's tempting me to just skip life and just get right to the to the big the big the big the big final 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 scenario. And even though I know that even if I did that, my life will have folded unfolded up to that point in time, meaning that people have gotten older, people have had their life experiences, people I'm not cheating anybody else out of anything. I'm just skipping over the heartache, the pain, the suffering, the good times, the joy just to get to the magic moment. Now, um, I'm in no way, shape, or form tempted to do that. I really, I'm really not. You know what I mean? I'll tell you the honest you know, God truth. And I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm done. This is the honest truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. You can give it any way you want. Even though there's something about, I you know when that traveling even though we're going to that final moment, one even though character. everything before me in the past will have a one encounter. Back it's not just that I would simply tell Gallagher to go back to the green room. Grow old or grow older or have kids of their own or not have kids of their own or predeceased me or whatever the case may be. Um, how do I describe it? Like, um, I wouldn't cheat myself out of the experience of having experienced those things. And I, I would never want to leave my children, you know, existentially. Uh, Skip over any boring time with them, even if I would get all the memories and if it all would have happened to me essentially anyway. Um, you know what I mean? I wouldn't want to risk it. I like I like my, my children too much, I like my wife a hell of a lot. You know what I mean? I love my wife, I love my kids, and really, to be totally honest, like I love everyone else on planet Earth, like you know, even Corey Good, like even Donald Trump, it would never occur to me to want to skip out of any of this because I don't want to leave the party. You know what I mean? Anytime soon. You know what I mean? I care about people. I care about seeing how things, you know, you know, and I want to make uh, independent decisions from moment to moment. We are coming to experience the ramifications of those and to learn life lessons and whatever. So I don't know what the deal is. Like I think, like I think, essentially, the library is kind of highlight. So now we go to stairs and we dream. Like not like a demon, um, but and he's not like a non player character in the sense that he's got jobs and doing what he does it. And I, I assume he plays for some other character. And I don't know if he wants you to accept the invitation to watch the final episode. 
uh, an absolutely uh, theoretical transgression, an absolutely theoretical transgression offered to me. Um, and he does sell it to me. Great. Know what what the, the, you know, like I'll say that much. Well, you don't want to have sex with the other reason. like, no, no. He's like, you misunderstand. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But I'm not really interested in that. You know what I'll say next time? Some other content on the CWG channel. I'm going to go off that channel to watch. Let's see if I want to 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 see if I want but he um, doesn't like, he doesn't, he's not allowed to give no attention to the yeah, man in front of the camera in the exchange. Um, if I, if is, I probe uh, him, like, why do you want me to watch an experimental uh, uh, lab? So I'm just awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is the world of the we need to figure that out. As we're waiting for people to come in to see how the sausage is made, I know pun intended. So don't look aside with the special, special. There you go. Hey, Dom. Hey, Dom. Welcome to the show. Um, CW's applied contract with the Honda Travel Technology Part 2. Following up from yesterday's video, we will be actually going and begin the introduction. First, kind of group project. I've been going through what I think is the first semester of CW Champions Secret Space Program Part 2. Really, I think had a good group of instructions on
In fact, the secret space program is taking place. I speak to the dead. Online for all sorts of different groups. Weird and wacky paths that you're going to be able to go into, if not multiple at the same time. We walk around after taking this. This, right. this this course, this There's seminar with yours for me, the team, everyone to wants to hang to out with Trump band. Thank you so much. Everyone wants to hang out with Trump band. People have been accused of that. Everyone wants to hang out with Trump band. Everyone wants to hang out with Trump band. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's how you doing? How you doing, Working on it uh, all day, right? Long. You know, um, trying to pop it up, I'm trying to get in, get in, get in, get in, get in the groove here. Um, you do it. <laughs> doing my thing, Trumpy Band. How you doing? How you doing? I uh, just jumped off the last live stream. I was stacking it. Oh my God, that music! Jeez, that's an immoral on that. Oh my. Oh yeah, we're going back. For no, seriously, you know, so, God bless. God bless youth of America and their the the scenario. Their stuff, the their uh, you know, the, the, the stuff they're doing, the music. Hey, listen, you know what I mean? Teachers on. I just want to say, it's a generational thing. I appreciate it. The point is this: in America, if you want to do that and call that music, I, you can do this. You know what I mean? That's and that's. The beauty, uh, God bless, you know what I mean. Um, but here we go, we're doing a special thing right now. Uh, Trump and Dan Live is the best space program is concerned. It's very easy, and or the greatest nation in the world is in my donation, donation, absolutely. Likewise, with graphic novels, comic books, books, scrolls, and librettos. And it's CW Chance, so give me that gold, give it up yourself to those works. Give me your kroner, give me your shekels. I'll take your Bitcoin mm -hmm. any yeah. day. Hoddle, hoddle, hoddle is Barring the way to say. I'll oh, hoddle till it's time to, to pay, pay, pay. pay. Do you the tell me that this is a thing? We're workshopping. Yes, yeah, be anything seems to look as oh, uh, and, and also stay tuned if you have a good experience at CW Chance School. Meet the people who go to the wars. Don't forget that next semester, the summer session, we're going to be doing a town hall thing over the summer session. We will be doing our moderators course. What are they talking about? Cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, crypto the stars and the CEO, uh, uh, dummies. Like, uh, we'll be uh, having a little pie as a so guest speaker. Guess this is um, and uh, you know, I mean, this is an adjunct professor. Uh, if you got a question, and, uh, uh, I think we'll have a wonderful time. You put it in our own that, can. You know, that, uh, 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 that, uh, that, 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 while well, you're looking up the guts and the questions for Trump and Dan, uh, did you, you want me to read this as a whistleblower? I'm being told. Future ideas, okay? The future plans. Mine is money. I'll tell you this. Anyway, yeah, here, we go. Put my, here we go. Here we go. Off to the race. Down. Yeah, okay. Let's begin with the question. Of comment is not all Trump. Okay, here we go. Trump and Dan. Can we bang? What do you decide to be the SSP whistleblower? Okay. So we got it. So it's a late night crowd. Very easy. So that's cool. Uh, from the band, from the band, we can do, right we can bang from the world, we can bang from the worldwide people of the population of the world. Take it from one, we can bang from the worldwide people of the population of the right? A solar so panel in the world. The stronger populace, the view here, you know, get it. A, we can, uh, you know, we can be chanting these whistles with the and there's just man, not a doctor. The scene is like drying that? up. Okay? Going to we need to get uh, you out here, uh, okay? You can bang with your time travel. We're not the inside. We need you to take your faith, your integrity, your truth, and we need to lay that on the line. Lay it on the line, super soldier, because we need you. What are your thoughts on the utilization of that gun trick in urban areas? Well, the very you go for it, you know what I mean? Uh, there's no money today's day and age in today's tough economy. I mean, uh, there's tons of money in this business, uh, but uh, that urban is just agriculture, not agriculture there, we will have and the uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, and culture. remember. Uh, and all of my good guarantees uh, family future farming or the projects and the, 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 uh, and the chickens absolutely you know, and, 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 and
and so what back one truth forum on uh, Hollywood Squares. Uh, uh, all those guarantees are completely uh, not guaranteed, uh, and I take no responsibility for vaccination. Uh, be uh, we'll go all for the and uh, son, uh, here's, here's, here's a here's the, 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 the 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 everything I did was for entertainment purposes. All of this was mere talk about man. So here we go. Here we go. In addition to the same, we don't know where we go. I'm also going to teach you black magic. All right, watch this. How come you never visited your bad troops? This is all for entertainment purposes. Confusing me with someone else. Who looks a lot like me? This happens all Contents the time. Of this I do YouTube not take it personal. Are I do not take Act personal. More. I'm very much aware of the uh, historical like context that. in which the magical I come circle is drawn around the uh, have magician, the practitioner, trumpet bearer, the from all unseen forces. From the past, past present, present, and the future. future. There's, there's some things I've got. But you promised. The, um, I, the, uh, I didn't promise. The, 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 the fictional character. There's some things that I should not have. Promise. The, the, the fictional character knows the one of the chapters recited a lot of lines in that performance piece. I'll tell you. If you just look at the reality, I don't know what to tell you other than. I'm in, the, I'm in that one. Good luck with that. Hour. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. there with the uh, defense yeah, number one that's going to tell you, you with your, the push court one we are not uh, brought forward to uh, we answer will. my you crimes against your truth, your truth. Your right? Answer my crimes against your truth. No longer you will listen to the program. And the validity of, you know, extraterrestrials and God. My number one defense is going to be exhibit A. A random video by CW Chan, which I will turn to the jury and say, put it in the dryer alone, put it in the dryer by itself. Anyone believe that? Do you think the issue is me? Or do you think the issue is that people are going to be crazy? Okay, I'll do that with my eyes closed and both hands tied in my back. And you, you I'll do it like from outside the room. Of the you know what right. I mean? And you put the, the, I'll, the I'll, I'll wave through the dry drive anyway. Okay? Because so uh, and this will be an effective way to do this without chance. affecting the but enough distraction uh, for, uh, and enough black magic. Uh, let's um, get to the first that, that magic we're going, going to talk about. about the every kid learns when they're about two or four years old. So so we're we're going going to to we all add to our little cool Harry Potter bag of tricks. First, uh, special uh, magic spell. Uh, like the <laughs> first magic is a little of fiction. Okay. The first thing you want to do is a secret big program with the flower. Is get comfortable with the concept. I just did this with my wife. Don't feel bad. The game. Homophobe, but not specifically gay. <laughs> <laughs> how do we how magnets work? Magnets work. I don't know. They don't. We are part Same. of we are famous philosopher. We're, we're blessed. Oswald's we back. Will. Uh, <laughs> 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 magic is underlined red on without YouTube any evidence to win the sweet of that election. Right? They won't be able to know. <laughs> Condominium Council President for El Dorado Six in a lovely Miami, Florida. Condominium complex authorities in Orlando, Florida. El Dorado Six. Language which your brain uses. Talk around the group home. Not the Greek of El Dorado One Three Four and All Five. El Dorado Six. I was condominium president for two terms. Lovely time. Lovely time. But then I relocated for Little Alfred. Here we go. It's a land game. Uh, Get off your Will you be making any statement caught, about okay, the shoot. upcoming JFK anniversary? Oh, JFK. Sure. Well, absolutely. 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 And absolutely. we're going to bring that aspect well, that's of the yeah. There you right go. Back on We've the seen too many wonderful channels that used to keep not us very, very busy and scratching our heads in wonderment, looking at the channels and going, how can anyone believe this? Well, look. 
Where are those channels now? Where is Galantic maybe Connection? The they haven't uploaded in months. Also, that's from my web, web that schedules is drying up. Where's Miles Johnson? He's talking to the same people uh, over and over so again. So desperately waiting you? for uh, uh, James Caswell to get out of prison. To but there's no guarantee that James Caswell will respond to him. And I want you to think of the other the other parties involved. What's Spoof going to get into? If he has an name, he wants to come to. What's no, Uni Rock no, going to okay, talk about? No, I will not if there's no new whistleblower, that's not a fantastic detail. Have you ever thought about those, those guys? I, you know what I mean? I think about Lil on the air, ironically. To come uh, along, but uh, yeah, you know, for the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can keep psychic vampires online. You by giving Michael on the air, many, many, many more people okay, to talk like about. I mean, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, like I'm I said, torn because I'm, I'm thankful. Who's going to answer uh, But the for this other guy, would there be no Trumpy Bear? But having said that, I'm not a huge fan. Be you. And, uh, so get comfortable with lying. This community needs you. I mean, these conferences, what are they going to do? Just have people sitting there and staring at that air? Come on. All Give some of those people very, something but, uh, to believe in. You know, hey, for all we know, the sun is going to go yeah, supernova so any minute and bake this place dead, as we said. In, in the meantime, says, give the community a little entertainment. Give the community a little satisfaction. Give the people something to believe in. I believe the scientists have taken away all our faith in the supernatural powers of ancient desert sky gods with their fancy pants talking about evolution, environmental science. What's there left to believe in? Flat Earth? Hey! I believe in a man upstairs or a woman upstairs. Where Maybe you're the so whole space program person that believes uh, in the flat earth. You know, those guys could use a shot. So, it's been a while so since Eric today uploaded. And when was the last time you heard you know about I mean? Dan? When you start getting uh, angry and fearful Crap. about people who just because they look different than you, 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 you make know. wacky decisions. You just do. You just do. It's not a Anyway, I got so without further ado, I care about the economy. Let's go to number recap. Get used to lying. Get comfortable with the concept. Of, not um, a, hey, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Hey, so, listen, uh, again, kids lie, right, right all the time. Boy, it hasn't been right, said that um, it's going to go bad, but I believe in that. Kids are wonderful. You know what I mean? I follow right? the trends. You that, know what I mean? That, uh, as a community. The you know, should be young at heart and you know, uh, retain a child's like imagination you know I mean? and uh, never let them and, uh, take your heart and be young and the kids are great. Huh? Huh? Oh to, my God. The kids lie all the time. Smart, you know, Seriously, as the, as you know, the world economy if is the kids didn't lie, lie who took those cookies from the cookie jar? Satan or someone from the secret space program? Who really knows? Really Maybe it was you. Back to the topic at hand. So, number one, get comfortable with lying. Number two, who are you going to be? The first first thing to do is identifying our potential career path is remembering that there are two roads that we can go down. We can go down the hopefully get over the tops of the natural new. Land, let's take all our contracts crystals and talk about 5D and ascension and everything so, happens for a reason and it's all beautiful. Uh, the Number one, I need to do the space channel. Go and look at a couple of the and the activity channel for the space program. You know what I mean? God's walking around seeing the Shibaya. So as a simple observer, you can start as a channel for the tech industry. It's fantastic. Then look at the simple we'll lesson and the activities of home exercises that are given out and do them on your own. Share them with your guys. You got to make yourself a sweet thing going. The Trump Bear is a capitalist. So I thought you had a sweet thing going there with the free trade, with the right to travel there. There is a whole thing about from an economic standpoint of having a highly mobile and educated labor force. We can go from nation state to nation state with ease. I thought that was good. Uh, that was good and effective reality. solution to like getting people of different well, training well, backgrounds to various different uh, areas where they, they could, uh, you know, you know, when you move to well, countries, you, you know, your chances of making it money increase. Uh, that's good. And people spread around. <laughs> get to, you know, everyone gets to know each other. I thought that was good. Or to tell the truth. Too. too. And uh, which is goes, it not uh, an objective sponsor uh, you know, lobby? That someone one, coming to the Trump Space Program was in the school academy might engage in it. You know, after school assignments, you have to contemplate the homework lessons and physiology, psychological makeup. 
and mental health. I don't know status. what is going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I got excited. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sell my, my, my order here the whole thing, right? I'm not going to leave you in the lurch. I'm going to go over there and make a stump in a little teacher. But if you do this referendum thing and rethink Brexit, I would do it. I would do it. I don't know about this. I thought the other pragmatics had a good thing going there. And I think that's what we're going to do. I think that it is true. I think it's going to be a more well to hard pace. I think Scotland's going to go down the road. More lucrative opportunities. Um, going down the path of uh, new way, everything story is just blind, blue, violet, red light, and I say, listen, this is without a doubt uh, true. I can't come from my life. I can't get knocked around a little bit, and I'm sure in the economy. Wonderful, one of the times can be had now on that road. However, given the fact that it is more of a queen, there's a lot more competition, a lot more competition there. And, and in fact, I got to tell you something you know about I mean? the Hopium Road. Don't get butter, the Hopium Road is the out of doubt the topless world. So there you go. I'm not crazy about the well tread path road. It's the lowest comedy you can do. You got to do this Brexit. You're going to have to take into consideration things like focus on participants. So, for example, if you look at like a model announcement, right? You know what? Hopium might be the way to go. A good looking guy or gal. And maybe, you know, maybe Andrew might be. So I'm going to have a oh. difficult time to go down. There we go. Oh, the 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 is going to be there. It's going to be down. The amount of competition. Thank you, Ben. That's kind of a mainstream route. So you're going to have to deal with it. Also, you know, here's the other thing about it. It's a little thing. It's a little thing. It's a little thing. It's a little thing. Let's talk about the number of people who are not born to be Christians. These are the cardinal models. And Tom O'Reilly is a slayer of working Christians. Dave Mustaine and Dave Ellis are new to make that thorough with working Christians. As is the black and lawless from the last year. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Everything's going good. And then you could have, you know, hopped on the, what do you call it, into the, what is it, still got the channel? I have a bad channel. They go over to France, obviously. But that doesn't change the special issues. I'm sorry. That shit you're not saying. Tom Ryan Slayer is a born again Christian. Now, come and ask me some questions on why you think I'm going to be a show. Right? There are lessons okay. easier to get, get involved in, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a, a lot of you people know, want to talk to each other. We got some shenanigans here. However, while there is there's less competition, man. there is Experience. less money. You might just rise to the top and gain Lassen. followers faster uh, going Trumpy, down the will you pardon the turkey this um, Thanksgiving? Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind of I will pardon all right the turkeys. Hey, you know, I, I'm blessed. Um, the, there's uh, no Halloween the, the, the time of year. The you know, third panel, so which I naturally designed as a the expo, is kind of as dark as the characters. When we come out, so you go down the third panel out there, it might be easier to rise to the top because there's a lot less competition. But having said that, there's not a lot of Patreon bots with it down the third panel. So you're willing to be paid in fame. It's essentially a matter of you're willing to be satisfied. You want to just not like a big conference. Whether you want to understand this kind of route, uh, you might have some that you weird get together, stale coffee, or a trumpet black man. You know, real fear of who's crazy or who's the one staying with people in the audience. And so, you know, having said that, you know. Hey, you can all be here with me. You can all be here with me. You will take your groupies virtually. It costs to come to the first one route. You know what I mean? But in the meantime, I'm going to turn the phone down. You've got some dark dreams to work out. Oh, baby. The next year form might be right back. Also, if you do see the darkness in the bed at night, gripping you with the short brows of the folks who just came from your camp, and then the white day is absolutely ideal. It's been a way. If you're really real, if you're not just a secret space program, what's the important thing to make money? But you're actually here for fun. You know, the fact that you've been living in the Atlantic program for whatever, and ironic, I have this new program right now. Uh, we try to give them an idea of what we talk about, and that's what I call the shots here, folks. But let me just tell you something. Oh, man. 
If it seems to be true, it figures out that I'm going to be chanting some more like this to be whistleblowers or get about it, right? There's holograms within my dark scene, but I make sure it's going to be a nightmare, a joyous nightmare, full of fun and fun for everybody. And remember, if we do this with other people, come this time next year, no one will know what's up, right? No one will know what you're going to do with this. It's totally one of the graduate of. Some I people with no hair on the God, you, oh my God, I don't know who you are, I don't know who you are. In and of itself, we can see in your experience in order to be able to decide to stay with her or whether you realize that's the point. This whole thing is ridiculous. See, the future of our family is being called like this. Am I listening to you? 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 Uh, three out of four times you're like going to stick to your I don't want to watch the video right out of the end. Yeah, trust in your story. Oh, the is terrible. Right? But you right. But you know, like, face is people like to see on their toes, and they like to give you a shit in the forest. Why do you like more believable? I get it. I get it. This is a cartoon. I mean, it's scary. Of all sorts of stuff. So hopefully, everything's three quarters of three out of four times. If you're like that, you stick to your main storyline. I'm going to try to stick to my protocols. You always want to have that magic curveball there. And remember, when I say that, it's percentage. You always want to put the switch around at the end. Sure, you're going to want to shake it up every once in a while. Here's a nice little thing. When you're going to a conference circuit or appearing on the internet radio broadcast, you can go one, two, three, changing up the story on four. The next time you go, think about the new paper. One, two, change up the story on three, four. You don't go with this. One and, uh, change of the story you know on two, what? three, Sometimes four, I go or, or now this lead in with you're, you're you know, a hoping guy to set the stage of darkness. You darkness know what I mean? You. I've made it's a always playlist that they call the Let Me Put In Nice Movie. You know why you're on this ride. Right. Right. Like you're supposed to sell the movies. It's Daddy's. It's Daddy's. Where are we going? Keep in a little bit of a ride. That I originate in order to be able to record. Here we go. It's going to keep people thinking that they're tired of a nice good night. Then they are. 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 So that um, will, and without it, it will be a real conversation. You know, 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 it will be a real conversation. Further, 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 further
till uh, you, you know the again? bluebirds have had been so no, ab- okay no, eleven twenty nine ninety eight so uh, okay. there there we go so that's and, uh, our recap we talked about that we talked about place 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 place. hope or fear and, and we want to mention the point that we have to go down there should be there anyway that would be five percent uh okay in conclusion <laughs> In conclusion, so um, we follow things through and we, we allow things to take spontaneous twists and turns. Um, playing uh, the, the the John Teeter material, I think, made perfect sense because this is a question I have to ask myself. Um, why did I do the John Teeter transmission and then, uh, naturally, thereafter, the things evolve with the Secret Space Program, Whistleblower School, into going to the applied uh, time travel technology segment. Um, as far as then doing the overlays, um, it's, it's basically the same point, is that you're trying to create an, uh, an overblow of stimuli so that it busts you through. And... It's like a spirit box, you know, you, you end up hearing what you end up hearing. Uh, and then having the, the 1998 material playing under, uh, you know, uh, overlay material underneath the John Teeter thing uh, brings that loop back in, into, into frame and allows that energy to exist. So at the end of the day, all these, all these recordings, these abstract uh, sound, 1998-inspired sound worlds, um, are, are yours to use. You know, you can sample them, you can loop them, you can play them at a subliminal volume, you can open up multiple uh, instances of YouTube on your computer. And um, this works on most computers. I know someone was saying that they, that, they, that, that, that they couldn't do it, that they could only play one audio stream at a time. Uh, that, that happens a lot with tablets but with, or phones, but with, um, with computers you should have no problem. Uh, open up multiple instances and adjusting the volume levels independently to try and create your own perfect little sound mix. Um, we're running into some technical problems. You know, the mixer that I'm using is this little toy mixer that I got like for like 25 bucks off of Amazon. And boy, does it show. I mean, it's not shielded in any way, shape, or form. So we're having a lot of weird instances with, you know, strange noises and kind of, you know, harsh tones and stuff. Uh, but that's okay because all those tones too, they they wake up the mind, they they shift you into an alternative space, they create variables. Um, so we're here to go. Uh, 1998 is our destination. We're traveling as a team. People are already in the classroom. If you pay attention, people are already jumping all over the place, really getting loose. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. So we're all hanging out in the same kind of communal space. And many of us are shifting in and out of time. I mean, we're, we're building something here. I mean, this is going to be amazing. We just have to remember to, to stay together. If you get lost, if you feel that you, you become separated from the group and start to feel any sort of extension, existential on way, wherever you are, whether it's on a metaphysical level, another dimension, the astral, a hell realm, or, you know, a mysterious place, or, or the geographical confines of, of the... Um, the place we call earth um just head towards new jersey trust me trust me trust the plan trust the advice all you have to do is have an idea all you have to do is have a notion an idea and the destination in mind and the knowledge that that destination simply heading towards that destination will bring you closer to back back we know when to turn the magic on. We know when to turn the magic off. If you start to get really, really scared, just remind yourself that we created a temporal shift within the confines of our brains by performing what is essentially a form of self-induced group hypnosis. It's not real, okay? It could be as real as you want it to be when it being real is a real trip and a gas and you're having a good time. If you start to get tweaked out about things, it's no problem. Just remind yourself, C.W. Chanter is a weirdo on the internet who hangs out in the basement in New Jersey. The dude thinks he can travel through time. Because he can't. 
the dude thinks that he has the audacity to think that he could start his own religion because he did. Okay. I'm as real as you want to be, but my reality is, you know, I've got, you know, I'm made of Achilles heels. You know what I mean? So like, trust me, don't believe me. Don't freak yourself out. If they start to get twisted or tweaky, just remember that CW Chance is an idiot. Okay. <laughs> So it's all good. You can find New Jersey. BB, it's not about trying to find New Jersey. It's just about saying to yourself that you're going to head there and then start moving in any direction with the intent of going closer to New Jersey. You'll get there. And beyond that, before, but way before you need to get there, the group will have found you. Believe you me, we're going to know if someone goes missing. Anyway, don't worry about it. That's it. That's it. Don't believe CW, believe CW. I'm an atheist. I'm not an atheist. Okay? The uh, Secret Space Program, Whistleblower School, Time Travel Experience is a total LARP. And simultaneously, we are going to travel to other dimensions. We are going to travel back to 1998. It's going to be effing crazy on planet Earth. See, we have, we, you can have your cake and eat it too. Make love to the theory of abundance. Dare to be stupid. Wise words. Dare to be stupid. But with that, it's 1 o'clock. I'm going to start training myself to try and get to bed earlier. Fuck <laughs> old Jersey. New Jersey is the place you want to be. It's where CW Chant is from. It's the Holy Land. Anyway, 20 and back. Hashtag 20 and back. It's hashtag CW Secret SSP. WBS, that'll work. No, it won't. 20 back, hashtag 20 back, hashtag 1998 in 2018. We're doing this. It's the fifth. We both have oodles. We all have oodles and oodles of time, and yet we're going to, it's going to go by so quick. Okay. So I love you. I love you. I love you. I really, 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 truly do. This, this transmission is going to be coming to an end. I love you, 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 I love you lots. Love you long time. If no one told you that they loved you today, a lunatic in New Jersey just told you that they did. Okay? So I'll talk to you all soon. I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow. In the meantime, have nice dreams. Okay? You know, call me like uh, Chef Popa Bawa. I'll see you in your dreams. Okay. Love you. Shout out to Popa Bawa. Be good.